Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesday, where we sit back, relax, take Hello. that midweek break, kind of just talk about stuff that we find interesting. That was the dulcet tones of Jill Bryant, who's recently back from a cataclysmic, catastrophic, world-ending power <laughs> outage. It was like 30 minutes. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's terrifying. We've all had that started. experience. We were talking <laughs> yeah. about that uh, in the pre-show is like 30 minutes is that time where you have to start thinking about notifying people. I might not yeah. be, you may <laughs> never hear from me again. This is getting dark. <laughs> or you can do what I did. I have not, I will publicly admit this shame until the, until I'm just not here anymore. I, the power was up for a couple hours one time. This was years ago. I got bored because I was reading a book. I have a book that I read and I'm on light and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I want some tea. So I legitimately went upstairs, walked into the kitchen, put a cup of water into the microwave and tried to use the microwave. It didn't work. <laughs> yeah. It took me a minute. <laughs> like, like, why oh. aren't you fe-? right? Power's out. Mm. Got it. So. We got a lot to talk about this afternoon. New OBS <laughs> stuff. We got some flexing Chromes, Linux and Windows on Android. And, uh, and Jill's going to tell you about some Inkscape stuff. But I want to tell you about <laughs> something. The new OBS, because we're running it right now. I pulled it last night from Git. I compiled it. We are doing my favorite thing, which is testing in production. So if anything explodes during the live stream <laughs> yes. or in the post, if there's just an overlay that just says, oopsie doodle, that that, that was that. Trackmania. Julie came and hung out with us last night. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I always love doing the practices. Tuesdays are <laughs> very, very important. We have a new server manager for Trackmania, which is the interface, which has, we got some Sith voting now. So it doesn't go from like, mm-hmm. eh, the map's okay. It's kind of all right. It's really bad. Or I genuinely yeah. hate this. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Thumbs up and thumbs <laughs> down. Tuesday is a very important day if you can make it or, you know, between Tuesday and Thursday to vote on the maps. And because, you know, I clean house like, oh, nobody like this map. We're going to pull that out. Maybe I'll substitute it with this. So we have a nice, nice little playlist that we'll be doing this Friday where we do a points match okay. and we crash around the track and whoever crashes around the track least in the <laughs> fastest amount of time, they get some free games. So it's fun time. It's a fun experience. Hop in our discord. We just hang out and just have fun. It's competitive to the mm-hmm. point of like, uh, what, what is that game where you throw like the sandbag through the hole? And the thing, I don't oh, know, what, you know uh, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah I do, yeah. but I'm spacing on the name. That, it, it's <laughs> yes. that level of competition. We're just having a good time. We're having a fun time. So, uh, Cornhole, thank cornhole. you, Mr. Thank Allen. you, Alan. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. With the, I put some fresh beats. We got like a custom playlist. Yeah, I noticed. So you, you can jam out to that. I put some more in there last night. The only reason I'm bringing that up is because I had to come up with a very efficient way to convert mp3s to augs to vorbis mm. and that that took some experimenting to get everything happy and copacetic with the game but one last thing i want to throw down because you might have missed this a couple of years back uh, there was a the, the great selling of 10 gig melanox connect x2 fiber optic cards you know, people mm-hmm. wanting to set up 10 gig in their house, like on the cheap. And these things were like 25, 30 bucks, super cheap. I got on the tail end and I was able to get two before, you know, the internet ran out. And when I say the internet, it was, you know, one eBay seller, massive sell off. This has finally happened with the Connect X3 series, which I'm Ooh. very excited about. They're currently on sale 26, 24, just You can do the search. I'll put a link in the show notes, no referrals or anything like that. I just wanted to give this shout out in case you're looking for a 10 gig solution for your house. And this will work with fiber optics, you know, 850 nanometer, which is easier. You can just do twin axe direct attached copper. You know, you can get two of these for 50 bucks. It's a good time. Maybe you want to play around with it. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe you want to go and buy like one of the $200 or whatever, 10 gig over (laughs) copper on ethernet and this is just this is a bad idea but <laughs> how about you jill you've best eaten, buy best buy you can get that for that price <laughs> i'm sure you can best buy sells 70 dollars <laughs> ethernet cables as i'm regularly yeah. reminded by one jordan Svang, <laughs> who wanted to know where is that cable by the way oh i have it he gave it to me That's, so it's oh, here no, he it's wanted in, to know where it's <laughs> in the house not, oh it's 
oh, I, it's actually not being used. It's still in my, uh, it's still in my uh, scale, Southern California Linux Expo scale box. Last for time they a were at scale, I get a text scale. message from Jordan. He's like, I just spent seventy dollars <laughs> on an Ethernet cable. Yeah. And Best Buy and then was it didn't even work on the modem. In the background. Yeah. <laughs> Best Buy, man. This has been yeah. my experience with Best Buy. Every time I've been in Best Buy, outside of the one yes. I can think of, it has been because I had no other option and I needed the thing right then. And I was not happy about it the entire time I was buying it. <laughs> you didn't want to spend $100 on a monster cable. Something like that. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> always something like, ah, no. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's the only place I can get it. Oh, man. How about you, Jill? You uh, took a holiday. Oh. Yeah, so me and my Steve husband, we had a great trip to Disneyland last weekend for a Valentine's Day, and it was pretty warm at the park, but we got there a little later when it was cooler, and uh, spent two, day two days there, and uh, the first thing we did after we went on Rise of the Resistance, which is an uh, amazing, amazing, it's, it's one of the most impressive uh, dark rides in history. It's one of the award-winning win dark rides. Actually, the most sophist sophisticated Star Wars ride and dark ride in the world. And everything was was uh, created using Linux with it. Now, so, I do have to ask uh, a question for like the 99% of us in the audience. What's a dark ride? A dark ride is is any ride that kind of gen generally moves slower through uh, a building. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a small world <laughs> so it's not dark <laughs> peter pan yeah well it doesn't have to be dark it's just they call them dark rides whenever whenever a ride goes in a building <laughs> okay that's just the name but some dark now the the term dark ride is uh changing because in like star wars rise of the resistance there's some exciting parts in the ride that move fast as well so they're kind of combining the dark ride with an um, exciting thrill ride as well. So hmm. that's the thing. Yeah. So after we went on Rise of the Resistance, which is amazing if you want to see lots of stormtroopers <laughs> and at ats, <laughs> uh, me and Steve had the best shrimp. I had actually the best shrimp and grits I've ever had at the New Orleans Cafe in Disneyland, New Orleans Square. And uh, that was a, a wonderful meal. So we just we had a nice, relaxing Valentine's trip to Disneyland. <laughs> Someone in Louisiana just fainted. Oh no! Actually, because they they have uh, the actually uh, quite quite different. The chefs are from New Orleans that they employ there, and uh, Walt Disney himself was was a connoisseur of uh, uh, Creole and New Orleans. Uh, Jambalaya. Doesn't change there. what it so said. So he man. actually hired. Now somebody else just <laughs> he fainted. He actually hired. How many people do you he want to faint, hired, Jill? Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> he, he hired chefs from that reg region to come to Disneyland and make food. Because so. we all know, like, especially, especially, like, if you're in the French Quarter, someplace like that, and you walk in and, and it, it has a score anywhere above 76, it's not going to be good. Oh, I see. <laughs> more sketchy, more better. Something that's definitely not sketchy, though, is the latest release. I saw Jill drop this in the show notes. I don't want to talk about it. Of uh, 27.2, Open yeah. Broadcaster Studio. This is from 9 to 5 Linux. All this is going to be in the show notes. But <laughs> this, this has got a big, chunky update just across the board. Because the big news, at least for me, is the release for the AJA capture devices, the Kona series and whatnot. Uh, that's a massive undertaking. I was there in the development channel when that information got dropped and everyone went, oh my no, panic. And ha having it in the system and out for public release right now, incredible undertaking. And I'm very impressed by that. So if you've never heard of like AJA devices, typically professional type stuff, because it's wicked expensive. But having a wicked expensive broadcast ready, you know, known quantity, that's really good to see. And unlike Black Magic, you know, AJA stepped in and helped the OBS team mm -hmm. out to get this developed. And Black Magic didn't lift a finger back in the day and like, no, you can figure it out, whatever. Also, AV1 encoders now available in the experimental mm. state. You should keep that in mind, experimental state, because there's still doing some tweaks and some works. If and only if you got the CPU to drive that nonsense. Updated browser source. I had to do that last night when I updated OBS, pulled it from Git, compiled it. And 
the unthinkable has happened. Something I never thought was going to happen. Something I accused of just being a novelty. Like, oh, this is a cute experiment. Mm. This one person is trying to put OBS in a flat pack. And I understand stuff like that because sometimes I like to punish myself too. But <laughs> flat pack is now oh, official. Just... It is. Yeah, OBS has an official awesome. flat pack package that you can download, which I'm just impressed by that. But do keep in mind if you're going to be using mm-hmm. the flat pack version, uh, plugin support is going to kind of depend on whether or not um, developers of the plugin are going to work with it. I think some work has to be done there and feel free to correct me if I'm right. But yeah, just overall a nice, impressive release. A couple other things. Though. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite uh, features of this version is um, there's a new option in general settings to hide OBS Studio's main window while you're capturing. And this is really cool. This is wonderful for background capturing or if you just want to capture audio with OBS. And also if you don't have a lot of monitor space and the, and your space is very limited on the desktop, this makes it a lot easier. Whatever. For, I'll especially just close, for those I'll just, with using one. I'll close my <laughs> eyes. I don't need this. Yeah. <laughs> but I was really happy about that because I, I have used OBS to capture audio a lot. And uh, that's very convenient. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> Just, just go play with it. OBS is such an awesome piece of software mm-hmm. and it's come so far. Um, you know, it, it started out as a closed source, you know, one person project and just see where it's come today. And this is what we used to live stream and record the show. And I'm, I'm abusing OBS over here. I mean, I'm making it do something like, wait, I can do that. And to that quality, you know, we're doing just straight mezzanine recording, DNX HD 440. I think I'm doing 220 on this LWTW multi-track audio recording. Still need to push that video out to the public. Um, maybe I'll get around mm. to doing that tomorrow. Trust me, I planned on doing that Tuesday so we could have talked about it on this week's show, but I didn't get time last night because I was mm. busy playing video games. <laughs> yeah, track media. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All right, um, this next bit kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, this is kind of cool. So Google has just made their free-to-use cloud-based Chrome OS officially available for PCs and Macs and calls it Chrome OS Flex. Boy, this is a long time coming, isn't it, Ben? (laughs) So Chrome OS (laughs) Flex can be easily installed on computers you already own by running it on a live USB and then installing it just like you do with other Linux distros. And it's easy to deploy across across your fleet of computers with USB or network deployment. And it also has the use of the Google Admin Council to manage updates and configure device policies remotely. And th- this is actually really big news. This is great for schools because they can use their existing infrastructure like computer labs, and it saves them money from having to buy more Chromebooks. And yeah, honestly, I've just been, I've honestly been waiting the, for Google to do this for quite some time, especially because of the success of Chromebooks. And we've had a lot of different distros that have tried to make their own, you know, version of uh, Chrome OS. Uh, Ubuntu has one that uses Firefox, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> so it's just nice to see an official release of Chrome OS that will run on all the things. I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, you know, I thought about getting a Chrome OS tablet for a minute because, you know, every two, mm. three years I update my tablets because I don't like laptops. So most of the laptops, I get yeah. tablets. And um, I was thinking about getting, you know, a Chrome tablet. I just couldn't find one that was like, quality wise that mm-hmm. I like because they were all like school tablets, you know, just strip down things. And that's what this reminds me of. On top of that, this is if you end up getting one of these from work, that means they don't like you. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> Cause this is like the super lockdown. We don't trust you to computer very well, but you could deploy this across, you know, existing so just have everything locked down. Don't worry about it. Nuke and pave with a power wash type features. Yeah. But Things you need to know about this. It's 64 bit only because first thought I had, I'm like, oh man, somebody's going to go and grab one of their big, heavy, chonky air quotes, vintage <laughs> laptops. Uh, yeah, Pentium 32 or yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Some, some nonsense <laughs> like that. And it's not going to work. 64 bit CPU, and you're going to need four gigs of RAM on top of that. Also, 
despite how nice and shiny this page looks, Google has just straight said Flex is not stable enough for a daily driver yet. So keep that yeah. in mind. I know it's, it's definitely a tinker toy. Now, yeah. installing mm-hmm. Flex is going to wipe all your existing data currently with current installer. Just also current. Keep that in mind. I want to say current three times in that sentence and I pulled it off. Now, Google doesn't recommend you install the operating system at all. Just like experiment with it. Put this thing in the corner, yeah. you know, around some barbed wire. And that might be a good <laughs> idea. As far as the experience, uh, this is Chrome OS minus the ability to run an Android apps and or the Play Store. So like I said, it's mm-hmm. very locked down. Like if you need to keep keep everyone focused, go for it. Like play around. I, I'm sure Pedro will have that up and running if he doesn't currently on one of his, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, out, out of the chair he has assembled in the left side of his living room. He'll take one of them and put it on. Yeah. I don't know. Like I've, I've never really played around with Chrome OS other than just like clicking on a few things with somebody's Chromebook going, yeah, that's a thing that exists. Uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I've been playing a lot with the installing Linux apps on Chrome OS and, you know, seeing that, how that all works and it works pretty well. I've got steam running on an, a Chromebook and, and the GIMP and Krita and Inkscape. <laughs> Whatever. It works pretty well. Whatever. Only peasants <laughs> run their Linux apps in Chrome OS. Real people do it on their mobiles. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So this is uh, awesome. The newly released Android 13 developer preview is out. And actually, there's something very special about this release. This release has full virtualization on hardware, such as for the Google Pixel 6 smartphone. This means that you can run any operating system, including Windows 11, dun, 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 and Linux distributions such, such as Ubuntu or Arch Linux ARM on the Google Tensor powered phone. And you can do so at near native speed. Uh, says Linux users know that virtualization can work at near native speed. Uh, AKA <laughs> known as wine or proton. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, several di- Linux distros have already been tested like Ubuntu 21.10, Arch Linux Arm, Void Linux and Alpine I'm Linux. I'm watching the video. And yes, I'm like we get it bro, even you run Windows Arch. 11. <laughs> you can run Arch, yeah. <laughs> and even Windows 11. But this is another big deal that that you know Google has initialized, you know, for, for full support for Virtualization. Void. Yeah. Yeah, Void Linux. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, this came from Danny Lin. You know, he's been doing a lot of hacking with stuff like this. And, yeah. you know, I'm watching his video right now on Twitter. There'll be a link in the show notes. Uh, full-blown virtual machines with KVM hypervisor, near-native performance, like Jill said, on a Pixel 6 with Android 13 DP1. Now, mm-hmm. protected KVM is optional and can be enabled on the per VM basis, but full KVM functionality is available with the non-protected VMs, which is super neat. It's super fascinating. However, however, Joe Bride, I don't know yeah. if it's necessarily super useful. This is uh, yeah. like, okay. Well, they were saying it's useful. Yeah. More for uh, developers and development. I actually know developers <laughs> who use Linux on their, their, you know, smart devices and, and do their coding that way. Uh, It'd be hard hard to see, but it, it does work. And actually Joe, why don't you give me a I, list of these people and I will buy them a Raspberry yeah. Pi for? Oh yeah, there you go. Even better. <laughs> but actually I've been running a full Linux desktop on Android since the beginning using tools like Andronix and Debian No oh, Root. I've done it, Joe. It worked quite well. I've done it. Yeah. But again, it falls down to even something that was designed from the ground up to run Linux Pine Phone. Yeah. What can you really do with yes. it? Tiny. Other well, than like, this is neat, and it's 100% <laughs> neat. Do not confuse that weird agreeance. Like, oh, man, this is <laughs> yeah. fascinating. This is kind of fun. But my brain always clicks over to like, so can I do anything yeah. with it? Other than like, yes, again, okay. neat, very neat. Because, of course, I would like to terrify somebody. I'm like, here, I'll put Windows on your phone. Um, well, if you, if you hook a keyboard to a Bluetooth keyboard uh, to your device, it'll become very functional for the coder. <laughs> It's just a very tiny screen to do coding on. That was that's my complaint. <laughs> well, well, I could get like a Galaxy Gear or something like that and stick it on my face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With a keyboard at a time. Or you know, you can hook 
you could, you know, hook an external monitor to it and or dock it. Again, know, at that point, I bring up works. the Raspberry Pi 4, which is hundreds of dollars cheaper. <laughs> or or even better, the Raspberry Pi 400 that's built into the keyboard <laughs> and you just hook it up to a monitor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Still, I think it's neat. And, you know, having it depends on how much of a pain it is to set that up. Uh, the possibilities really is where the usefulness is. This is one of those things yeah. that having this avenue to experiment and play around with will absolutely positively lead to something useful. I guarantee you. Guarantee. Yeah. So, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, like Samsung mm-hmm. DeX. No, this this appears to be yeah. more useful than DeX because you don't need a bunch <laughs> of cables. <laughs> the convergence device that we all want and that we've all been promised in the future, that's never going to take off until we can do everything oh. wirelessly, until you can just drop the phone on the desk and everything else picks up. <laughs> until, well, until that's the thing. Fine. <laughs> yeah. True. Well, finally, Google's come of age. It's not like I didn't do all this stuff on my WebOS uh, <laughs> Palm Palm device and Palm Pixie back in the day. In fact, I I compiled my own uh, Linux distro. I compiled Debian on it, and you know, made it half made it fully functional under Linux. But it was hard to see. Yes. This is uh, continuing the time honored <laughs> tradition of neat, but of questionable usability. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I, listen, I, I have to stress yes. this huge fan of by the way i love doing useless yeah. stuff but I, <laughs> I i i could admit it but i don't think this is useless at all this is well, keep your eye on this keep your eye on this and see what people come up with mm-hmm. and uh i i look to i i look forward to see what what the, what the gaming experience is yeah absolutely yeah yeah steam <laughs> on the cell phone oh we have been like <laughs> box 64 or something like that oh, yeah yeah no. Uh, go for it i want to watch it i just don't have time to do it now inkscape is Mm -hmm. something that we were talking about earlier and we were talking about distribution Mm -hmm. methods and of course inkscape is available as an app image and they have a ppa and just app images are neat we're fans of app images no problem with that but this latest version jill's about to tell you about i can just Mm -hmm. sit back and relax because i looked over it and i said i don't need any of this to make our merchandise but you at home <laughs> might have more demanding uh, needs from your Inkscape. <laughs> yeah, so Inkscape 1.12 has been released with lots of bug fi- fixes. And actually, it improves translations for 15 languages, which is always awesome for our international community. And But that is not the big news here. The exciting news is that Inkscape 1.2 Alpha has been released with major I quote, major UX changes and new features. You can now have multiple pages in one document, which allows you to import multi-page PDF documents and export them. There's a feature in Inkscape I've been wanting for ages. And also the color palette has been refactored to make finding colors easier, which includes palette previews, easier scrolling and multi-line palette views. You, n- you no longer just have that single line on the bottom of the app to, to try and find your colors. And it's just a lot easier now to find your colors. There's new snapping guides to align objects on the canvas. And there's a new gradient panel, which allows for easier fine tuning of gradients. There, this release is so huge. I can't talk about it all. So go to our show notes and, and read all the updates. It's pretty amazing. Now this is the alpha, but uh, you know, I'm I'm sure the stable is expected this year sometime. So that is a good thing. So yeah, like Ven was saying, you can go grab the app image and start playing around with it now. Yeah, you can just pretty straight awesome. throw down with it. The <laughs> Yeah. I gotta say Inkscape <laughs> is one of the few programs that I can name off the top of my head that has really, really clutched onto like, this is how bad modern UX was in the nineties. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's the it, favorite vector based program for Linux, but yeah, the UI has been a little clumsy. <laughs> it's just over the years. I mean, it's not good. Yeah. No. It, the program itself is good. And you can say about user interfaces for a lot of programs. The Inkscape, every time I have to yeah. go back to it, is, you know, and listen, it's me. I'm not technically competent. I don't know these things. But I find myself Googling more per attempt to do something 
that you would normally in any other program go, I, you know, you just into it, which I understand incredibly difficult task, yeah. but things like I want yeah. to set the background color. I can click my way through this. You know, I take some of that windows, like how windows users approach <laughs> Linux. They're like, I know how to do this. I can click my way. Yeah. And Inkscape's got that same vibe. I'm like, no, you want to change the background to the, uh, that's going to be a Google search. Like, Oh, <laughs> is it? And it's like, uh-huh, well, it is. Yeah. To its credit, it's it's very much like Adobe Illustrator, which isn't all that intuitive e- easy, easy, either for a first-time user. Um, and actually, in- Inkscape kind of reminds me of the older Corel Draw. That's one thing I like. about Like it I a said, lot. it really holds <laughs> on to that bad '90s inter. Like this is how we used to have to deal with computers, <laughs> yes. and that's why they came with big chunky True. manuals because of stuff like this. And I say this as yeah. a person who's very familiar with Fusion, Blender. DaVinci Resolve mm-hmm. and like stuff like that yeah. or the nonlinear video editing. And yeah, this, this is so the one that'll throw me. Th- now <laughs> I, I have a sneaking suspicion. It's only because I've been, you know, I know GIMP. I know GIMP. Like I can do stuff in GIMP that I shouldn't be able to do. It's just, because I've been using GIMP for almost two decades. Oh, yeah. Same here. So yeah. I don't know if GIMP is better or worse. I'd like some feedback. Send me, send me some mail for the show next week. We can read. <laughs> yeah. Like somebody who's reasonably new to GIMP, like you had to do a thing and you cracked open GIMP. Is that intuitive now? I don't know. Well, I think the new versions are, uh, they've really improved the UI with the latest versions. They, well, they look, f- it looks more like Photoshop. <laughs> I'm not a fair judge. Well, remember when they finally put everything in one panel? Yeah. One window, yeah. which took me forever to get used to because to I didn't. To get used to? Same mm-hmm. here, Vin. I like all the little panels everywhere. Uh, Honestly, well, I still sometimes split them up. I <laughs> learned to use GIMP, like seriously, on a multi-monitor because that was the thing yeah. with the panels. I'd have everything set up. In exactly. Set. But with like GIMP, I'm so accustomed to like the default, sh- the new colors on the um, icon on the tool. I had to get rid of that because mm-hmm. visually I couldn't, I don't know what that's supposed <laughs> to be. I understand that's supposed to be yeah. like new and edgy and sharp, but no idea. Like, so yeah, if you use yeah. Inkscape, uh, more power to you. I like the program. We use the program. Every piece of, uh, it's amazing. hundred percent. And every single piece of merchandise, um, that, is available that I've done anything it is available. And if it'll load, cause guess what? This is the yeah. best segue I've done in recent memory. Our store. <laughs> Absolutely. Ben store. Yeah. Put Lin- us all Linux over your Gamecast face, shirts. chest and neck. Hmm? <laughs> Linux game cast shirts and LWW shirts. And there's one of Frank. <laughs> we got stickers, we got chairs, we got penguins, all the fun stuff that you would expect. And these are not incredibly priced by any stretch of the imagination. Cause one thing that always irritated me was somebody having a $30 t-shirt and you buy the t-shirt. Usually I get long sleeve t-shirts and uh, mm-hmm. you get it. And I'm like, Hey, I want to support X, Y, Z shirt shows up. And I'm like, oh, that's $30 t-shirt. And you pull it out and it's that like material you can see through. I'm like, really, really? You charge 30 yeah, bucks for like the lowest quality option. These are all the highest quality. Like we're making like a buck, maybe two bucks off most of these things. So yeah, these yeah. are nice thick shirts. Yeah. Also, I'm not, I don't want people to pay a lot of money to advertise for free for us, Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yes. If that's your thing. If that's not, uh, we do want to thank everybody who makes the show possible. Everyone who supports us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux game guest. We've got a bunch of new people this month. So far, we got a bunch of levels, um, chairlings, death notes, sea monsters, all of those have a collection of different rewards we like to throw in since, hey man, if you can kick us four quarters a week, that'd be brilliant. Put it to good use. We can buy things like fiber cleaters because that's what <laughs> I was ah, doing before. Yes. Think, doing that as grand times, but that helps pay for the bandwidth and all the other stuff that we do to try to bring you entertainment on Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. That's a rock yes. block. No Sundays. Five days a week. But if I get if I get a Sunday free, because Aldius bought a game off of um, my Steam wish list, which shocked uh-huh. me. I love I love everyone. We have, you get access to our Discord if you're a Twitch sub or if you're a patron. By the way, there mm-hmm. I keep forgetting to mention that. But I, I was floored because you know I got like games on wish because I never used wish list until. Um, either Jordan or Pager were like, yeah, that's how you can keep track of sales. And like, 
oh, now I understand why I want to use a wish list. So, uh, yeah. And no one ever gets anything <laughs> off my wish list. They're just like, here, play this. And uh, Aldi's got uh, one of the Star Wars games off my wish list with a note. He's like, you have to play it on stream. I'm like, man, okay. So I might stream, I, not this Sunday, maybe next Sunday. I'll do it on my uh, Twitch channel so I can keep no word. But speaking of wish list, uh, Jill <laughs> has one. It will make you yeah. ill to your stomach with the RGB oh, nonsense, yeah. like right up there at the Glowing top. Glowing penguins. Kingston I love all my drives, penguins. All that. And uh, I have one for the studio, which is filled with things like boring studio stuff. No joke. That's, <laughs> that's what it says. Like things like mass loaded vinyl. And uh, yeah, if you get anything like that, you end up back here. I will publicly shame you for all eternity unless you decide otherwise. And uh, yeah, there you go. This um segment brought to you by you the more you know Woo-hoo. there we go we love you all <laughs> now we got a quick slice of pie don't want to eat this one because i'm knocking your teeth out no that looks more like a pep- it looks more like a pizza that's a porcelain Pepperoni. pie oh okay <laughs> that's, that's why it's all it, the the shiny part looks like grease <laughs> You, you can use your imagination as you're chiseling out yeah. your teeth on that second bite. Yeah, that's not, a. I wonder if Ben is it hollow or solid. You know what? I'll send you one. You take a bite out of it. Let me know. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, Pico PIO USB, a USB host device implementation using the PIO of Raspberry Pi Pico. Mm, this cool. is incredibly neat is what this is i got a demo yeah. video pulled up right now because now you can add additional usb ports to the raspberry Pi 2040 this is fascinating nice. this is interesting this is uh, the exact opposite of like this is this is going to have a bunch of cool uses so you might know the rp2040 microcontroller has several several programmable pio mm-hmm. cores which are essentially the like standalone state machines read write directly from memory the gpio pins now Unlike bit banging the pins with the CPU, you can implement much, much more timing sensitive protocols, reducing CPU usage all at the same time. This keyboard is wicked neat. He's like, this is my keyboard. This is my split keyboard. This is my three-way split keyboard. This <laughs> yes. is my three-way split keyboard with a gerbil, which is the wrong one. Wait, nope. I, I think that, <laughs> hang on. Is that? And they're, and they're mechanical, but they don't have RGB bling, 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 then no rainbow feature, vomit. Huh? That's a feature. Um, so yeah, there's demos of people, uh, implementing like VGA out digital audio, all sorts of interesting protocols, but having the USB stuff there, like, I don't even know where you can go with this. Like this, this is fascinating, very fascinating. So there is a warning on the GitHub repo that this is a work in progress. Expect changes. Don't play with it. If it catches on fire, kicks down your back door and runs off screeching into the night. Not the developer's problem. So, Mm. (laughs) <laughs> i just thought this would need maybe somebody is like hey i've been waiting for yeah. this not necessarily my wheelhouse but i wanted to give a mention but if you'd like to tell us about things that are inside of your wheelhouse and why you have a house made out of wheels you can do that by heading over to our contact page select the right show we got linux Schemecast weekly lwdw is the topic for this and you know type things like wheels smash that sin button fam and we'll get a message with your name on it. Like Krishan. Krishan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Krishan. No. Yeah. So then um, Krishan says, I. What's it about? Or no. <laughs> uh, the name is Review Prices EVGA XR1. That's what it's about. <laughs> so, so I personally dislike when people feature some product as cheap quote, cheap, affordable, then not mention the price anywhere in title, thumbnail, description, or pinned comment. (laughs) Well. Krishan? Krishan. (laughs) Yeah. Now, this was, you know, I did the um, cheap, easy, affordable EVGA XR1 Lite, which was an HDMI capture device, and it was like under 70 Mm -hmm. bucks. It was like 60 bucks. And yeah, you know what? Guilty as charged. You got me. You got me. I did not put a price in the thumbnail. I did not put a price in the description. And uh, I didn't, you know, put a price after I told you to smash that thumbs, bells, family, or whatever. <laughs> jump cut, jump cut. 
I wonder if kids still do jump cuts. That was thing for a minute on YouTube. Now, oh yeah. The reason I don't do that is something I've uh, learned is uh, this might come as a surprise to you. You know, especially being in the thumbnail, it's still a problem if it's in the description. Especially if you get a lot of videos, there's there's a little issue you just might have to deal with. It's uh, prices tend to do this thing uh, change. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Change. Because the EVGA XR1 Lite, when I made that video, I went and looked it up. I went and looked it up because, mm. hey, let's be accurate about this. It was 79 wet, stinky American caches. Today, mm. well, yesterday, I will say, instead of 79, it was $67. And a ah. few months ago, during, you know, Dark Phoenix was released and crashed the economy, uh, it was $85, like four <laughs> months ago. Oh, boy. That is why <laughs> I do not list prices in the description or thumbnail. But also, Krishan, that's why no one else does it either. And the people that do do it, those prices that you're reading, that you're making a judgment without doing that second step of investigation, to find out what the current price is, you're probably missing out on more deals than you realize. You are. Because mm. day to day, but especially month to month, prices fluctuate. This is reality. And uh, yeah. that's why you don't see a lot of baked in prices. And the ones that you do see, most certainly are inaccurate. Yeah, absolutely. On even on Amazon, they change from day to day. <laughs> oh, it's, it's Amazon. Depending they change on it. demand they, they, and Jill, they yeah. change on depending on which Power. computer you log in on. Yeah, yeah. There's that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes Amazon will give you a discount. You know, because they they see you've been buying a lot of things, so they'll offer you a discount that no one else gets, and uh, <laughs> it goes on and on. <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. We run a little bit long, <laughs> six minutes long, but you know, 36 minutes, that's not too bad. That's reasonably tight. Yeah. We're getting there. Yeah, We're getting absolutely. There. So I'm going to <laughs> roll some credits. Okay. Baby. No, no. Ha! From Pingu, the late. penguin. <laughs> I missed it. I'm wearing a, a Pingu shirt, Pingu penguin shirt. And he's saying, no, no. Looks like he's <laughs> holding a baseball bat. <laughs> It does kind of, he's got a very long horn for a beak. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like an arm with a baseball bat. You can't really tell because the yeah. microphone's covering it up. <laughs> yes, it does, actually. <laughs> noot, noot. <laughs> hey, thanks, everybody, for Aww. letting us do this. Thank this you. Interesting, interesting show. Notes. And it's also Charlie's. very important because this is where I test in production. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> LWW 314. Wow. 314 <laughs> episodes. Hey, if I do something, I stick with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Love you all. Mm -hmm. Noot, noot. <laughs>